Okay. How are you, Professor Brahmanian? I'm doing fine. Okay. See, for the general information, let me state that I'm actually from Madras University with an MA, MS degree, uh, MT, uh, master's degree with a second rank. Then, of course, I was debating what to do for some time. Then I decided to go abroad for higher studies, even though I was also selected for the Air Force, to be very surprisingly. But I decided to go abroad, so I went to Columbia University with the help of the Fulbright Fellowship, which was given by the United States Education Foundation yes, yes. in India, and also a scholarship from uh, Columbia University itself. Mm -hmm. that, that was my PhD. That's where I did my PhD with a famous professor by name, famous but very young professor by name Professor Harry B. Gray. It's a kind of a new field in which he was beginning to work, crystal field theory and spectroscopy. Then of course, after getting my degree in 1966, I moved to Michigan State University to work as a you know, research associate come assistant professor for a period of about three years. Okay, meanwhile I just went, came here in those days, you cannot come to Very India often. quite often. So I went home only after four years of stay at Columbia University. So I stayed for three years. There we learned new spectroscopic techniques compared to what I had done in the uh, I, I had done in Columbia University. Then, of course, from there I was directly recruited by IIT Kanpur uh, for my, for an assistant professorship post. So I went to IIT Kanpur as my first stay. Subsequently, I decided to, uh, not I decided, other people decided my fate. <laughs> That's both Professor A. Ramachandran, they then director of the, uh, director of IIT Madras, and probably the one who really brought in the experts from various faculty into the institute. And with the compulsion from CNR Rao, I landed up at IIT Madras in the year 1972, February month. That was what I specifically remember. Thereafter, of course, I was part of the chemistry department. But at the same time, one day, Professor Ramachandran called me and said, now, as I already requested you, without telling others, that you are going to be in charge of the special instruments laboratory. And then he asked me, I wanted to take in two more people who could just go with you for higher things. And I said, OK, sure, of course, I do know there are a couple of guys who can join me. And it turned out to me, I said, see, my basic interest was quantum mechanics, quantum chemistry and spectroscopy. So I have to rely on similar people in order to develop a big laboratory. So then, of course, I chose Professor uh, Sardar Sujit Singh as well as Professor Subramanian. And both of them have similar expertise. Only thing, there are small differences in our expertise. So for example, they joined. And then we three became what is it called leaders. Some people, you know, he wants to say, some people call us three musketeers outside. But doesn't matter. But I was the lead, leader of the team. And then, of course, we created from special, we first took charge of the Special Instruments Laboratory, which was originally a gift by the uh, Indo-German project, it was by the Germans. Yes. It was a very fantastic project. But unfortunately, when I went through the instruments, I found it lagging, it's lagging in sophistication. And I was accustomed to, you know, I was talking to you on my way. I had already used an expand EPS spectrometer and a Q band EPS and that to liquid liquid helium temperatures. So I cannot I cannot accept it. So I wanted more. And that was the starting of the regional sophisticated instrumentation With center concept. That, that, no, 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 that, that was by that was initiated actually Professor A. Ramchandra. Right. So hmm. now I'm going to give the background after that one. Sure, sure. Then we can throw it together. So I am actually from the uh, Tamil Nadu state, but my father was working in a place called Kotayam in Kerala. And so I shifted from Tamil Nadu after my school for college education to a place called CMS College, Kotayam. That is the oldest, one of the oldest colleges in the country. It celebrated its 200th year earlier this year, uh, which uh, the chief guest was uh, the former, former president, uh, Pranam Mukherjee. So that institute had was starting postgraduate degrees in chemistry. So I did my master's in CMS College, Kote. And then probably the atomic energy used to pick up the top rankers for Bombay atomic energy. So I attended the interview in Trivandrum and they selected me as a scientist for atomic energy. Went to Bombay, 
from a uh, atomic energy commission, started working on isotopes and isotopic separations, and started using isotopes in agriculture, mothball sources, and many things I did. And then it was slowly dawning out to me that atomic energy is not probably the place for persons who want to do really interesting research work. It's more like conforming to what atomic energy wants, because there are very narrow but really important uh, projects that you have to work on, but you cannot do anything you want. So I decided that it's time for me to quit. There was a three-year bond. So after about two and a half years, uh, I started applying for scholarship to outside. I got a fellowship at Boston University and went to the head of the department, Professor Aya. Sir, I have a scholarship. I want to go to Boston. Uh, can you give me three years long leave without pay? Are you kidding? There are so many people on the queue to go to USA and they got scholarship. We cannot give you wait for at least four or five years. Then I went to the second head, Desh Pandey, the Maharashtra. I told him, sir, they wanted to leave and they are not giving me. Can I suggest one interesting way? You go home on a leave and don't come back. Just simply that. <laughs> but what about my man? <coughs> oh, but he was you already done two years and nine months. It's a three year bond, so no problem, let you go. So I why then the Boston Fellowship expired. They had given me only three months and I was corresponding with the atomic energy and by the time they said no, it was more than five months. So I was frustrated and lo and behold, another scholarship offer came from UK. Uh, I had applied through an advertisement in Nature last page. Yeah, Simmons, please. Yes, Martin Simmons. Simmons. So I applied yes, and then, young man, I have a scholarship for you. you just tell me when you want to come. Ah, so bold from the blue. So I went to England and did my PhD in a field which was just emerging. It's called electron paramagnetic resonance. And this Martin Simmons, the professor, was one of the pioneers in the field globally. So he took me and trained me and we had a lovely time. I even remember that I got down at the airport in uh, London and he was waiting at the passenger's arrival and he asked me, you are, yes, you must be, because the only Indian coming out of this flight is you, so you must be, can you tell your name? I said, my name is Sankaran Subramanian. Oh my God, that is too long. From today, I christen you Subu. You'll be called Subu. I said, fine. That really stuck. Even today, he calls me Subu. Subu. All my students call me Subu. So I did my PhD there. Uh, this was another record. Usually, people take three to four years for a PhD. I finished it in 23 months, my PhD. At the end of the PhD, I went to the registrar. It's a little bit of a personal story. I went to the registrar, told them I wanted to submit my thesis. Young man, you've done only 23 months. You know the rules? Minimum two and a half years before you submit the thesis. I said, what am I supposed to do? Go and wait for another six months. So I went to my professor, he says, submit the thesis and go on leave. <laughs> we can take the bio, say when you come, go home, go to India and so come back. On the other hand, at Columbia, we had there thorough grinding. The first year is only for doing coursework. coursework. Mm -hmm. Only for coursework. And then you have to give a seminar. At the end of the seminar, they decide whether you are going to stick out in the at Columbia University or going to be thrown out. Mm -hmm. So if they throw out the person, if they have a little reasonable record, they give up some kind of a master's degree and throw them out yes. comfortably. <laughs> the rest of them are retained. So and it takes minimum four and a half years there. But there is no such rule. You can do it earlier. It's okay. In but UK, there are no strict coursework, but you can audit all the coursework. But then by the time I finished 23 months, I already had 10 publications in very good journals. So naturally there's no justification for delaying me my degree. So anyway, I came to India, spent a couple of months, went back and got my PhD in. Uh, the university is called the University of Leicester, written as Leicester. And after my PhD, I did one year postdoc with the same professor and started looking for jobs in India. Applied to Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, they called me for an interview, took another leave, came to Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Professor Balu Vagatama was the chief of uh, spectroscopy. He also asked me. He interviewed me after some time. Hey, are you interviewing? You or you are interviewing us? I started asking too many questions. He said, sir, I just wanted curiosity because what I will be doing in TFR, I was just looking at. So he said, you are, sir, you are taken, no problem, but we are going to give you only a visiting position. I said, sir, I don't want a visiting position in India. If I was an American, if you give me a visiting position, I will accept that. Or do you give me a visiting position when I am an Indian? But that is the rule here, you have to be a visiting man and then after three, four years we'll think about it. I said, sorry sir, I don't want it. So I came back and there was a postdoctoral fellowship waiting from Michigan State University. Lo and behold, 
I just understood later on he had just left. <laughs> I had just left. left. I was the same. Professor, professor what Canadian guy professor? called Max Rogers, and then I joined the Michigan State. It was very productive here because he was a magnanimous guy, this professor in So, so Bo and I somewhat, you know, not overlapped, but of course we followed it. He followed yes. me and I followed him. And similarly, I followed him at IIT Madras. Yes. That's so I, I joined IIT Madras about three months earlier than he came from IIT Kanpur. So after my uh, postdoctoral fellowship at Michigan, I went to the embassy in Washington looking for jobs in the newly emerging IITs. So there was an education secretary, he said, Professor Ramachandran, IIT Madras director, will be here soon. He would like to visit engineers and scientists who are interested in coming back to India. So you can go and meet him. So actually, I didn't have any chance to talk to him, but a lot of engineers were waiting to get to India. So I was in the back bench of the room. And then at the end of the thing, he said, anybody who is interested in this new IIT Madras, if you have a good recommendation from your professor, just contact us. So I went back to my professor, told him, sir, I want to go to my native place. And I'm from India, from South India, there's an institute coming. So he said, okay, I'll send a recommendation letter. I send a letter. He must have written a super letter recommendation letter because normally we wait for six months, nothing happens, you know, from India. I waited for three months, there was a Western Union telegram signed by registrar at IIT Madras, Setunathan was the registrar at that time, appointed as assistant professor, we shall provide money towards your travel to India and also accommodation will be provided on campus. And what else you want to come back to India? I jumped on it. At that time I already had a position in Texas Tech. I told the professor, sir, I got something in my own home country, I am going back. So he said, no, no, go back. If you are not happy, you can always come back to Texas, what he told me. So I came and joined here and met Ramachandran, I was just really so happy that I am coming back to India, number one. Number two, to an IIT, which is just about 10 years old at the time. I joined in 1971, uh, 79, 79 it's 12 years old. Yes. Right? You joined in 71? Yes, 71 November, and you joined in 72 February. I have I gone to IIT Kanpur in 69 end, mm. and then of course I left in 72, very early 72. Right. So right. that is because of two different reasons. Only Sir Ramachandran wanted me to have it, mm -hmm. have me there. So they didn't tell me, but of course, CMR was pushing me, hey, come, let's go to Madras and just meet the director of IIT Madras. I also came, and of course, there was a huge set of people, all from the top rank, like Professor C.R. Kanekar from uh, TIFR, and our uh, Naidu, who was then the uh, director general of CMR, I mean, director of CMR later. He became the director of the of CSIR and so on and so forth. Nine people were interviewing me. So I was just looking at them, answering all the questions. Then I went away and immediately I was called in. Only person, over one person they had an interview. And then they called me and he called me and said, I'm offering you the position of professorship. You want to come? You must join. I said, you said you want me to come here. I CMR have told me only to go for an interview. Now you are calling me to come and join. Mm. Well, if you want to come, then I have to have few conditions to be laid. I told you very bluntly, I have a few conditions because I know about the department here and I have to survive on my own order. I'm an independent person, so I should have a lot of independence to work with. So I need this, 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 this. You are giving too much of a list. How am I going to give it? But I will give it. You come anyway. So within two months, wrong to them. come anyway. And within two months, and they forced me to come, CMR said, you go there, you will prosper. That's what I still remember. So finally I landed up here. And uh, Sibu was, was there already for three months ago. Even a little earlier, so did see me John. Yeah. So when Ramachandran at the time, he said, you are going to be in charge of Special Instruments Laboratory, which was given as a gift by the Germans. Okay, I will take care of it. I said, you are going to be in charge. But you need two more people because it's a big place and I want you to develop it as a big place, bigger place. So, whom do you want? I looked around and of course by that time I know most of the people here, their interests. There are two people's interests but coinciding with mine, quantum chemistry and spectroscopy. Only thing is he and I are believing in magnetic resonance more, okay, he's more of a magnetic resonance man than me, but I involved in all forms of spectroscopy. And Professor Sujit Singh is a molecular spectroscopy is involved in, you know, what's called optical as well as a ra optical IR and Raman.
So they thought putting together, it's a fantastic gang to do this spectroscopic investigation. So then of course, we had a chance, what to do next? Okay, we cannot stop here. And of course, by that time, Professor Ramachandran, you know, I have never seen an administrator like him. You go to him with a problem, even before when he gives appointment, he already knows what far he has come, what far I have got, I have gone to him, and he gives you the solution also. So within five, within two to five minutes, the interview is. I mean, the problem is taken care, and you come back, and he, then one day totally different. You think about something developing in a bigger lab, and DST has a program like this. You apply for it. So that's how I started. I wrote the program with the help of these two guys. Program on creating the first and premier regional sophisticated instrumentation center. A new concept in, in what is called sharing the, the kind of equipment that we have for our benefit as well as the benefit of the entire nation. I have, nobody has ever thought about a center like this from which will serve from Kanyagumari to Kashmir, the whole country. So that was, that was the bad. And that happened in 1974. And Subha will tell you that how we got the first equipment. Because in India, getting sophisticated equipment is itself is very expensive. Everything is imported from foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is a tough thing during the 70s. You know, we don't nothing have that yeah. historic not, Nothing, you have to ask for special permit. Yes. And uh, foreign exchange was given even when that such a difficult equipment is imported and given to a professor, the professor will hover over it and use he it only for himself. Yes. None of, his none of the students, even in the same institute, will have the benefit of the equipment. Therefore, this possessiveness really prevented a quite a lot of number of people not having access to this. Although they were there, within the same premises, they could not get their hands on to it. And plus, they are not even So, the idea science. of importing very expensive, sophisticated equipment and willing to share it, whoever come, first come, first serve, <coughs> that concept was highly appreciated by Ramachandran. The idea was from PT and myself, we wrote the whole uh, idea of how we are going to do it. And then he he sent, Lord, we submitted the project, correct me if I'm wrong, submitted the project, waited for three months, about two and a half months. Then suddenly we got a phone call saying that there is a guy called Mr. Santana. He was a secretary in the railway department. Unbelievable. And he is being deputed to discuss with you and Manoharan and the director about the project which we are really interested in. Oh, we are very happy something is going to happen. Sartana comes, listens to Manoharan and me and Surjit for about 15 minutes. I think the project is granted. You will get all the money you want. Tell me what you want now. Uh -huh. Even we, this thing never happened in the history of India. You write a project, you go through project reviewing and you go on reminding for three months, six months, nine months and finally something comes and you ask for 20 lakhs, you get 3.3 lakhs, something like that, kind of ratio. See, at that time, Here he says, this is granted, it's a grand idea, we love it, we are especially happy because it is an IIT campus where the infrastructure is fantastic and we told them that even if the most sophisticated equipment we import, we will make sure an electronic person is trained in the factory of that particular company so that he will be able to do troubleshooting without much delay. So that was the concept. Oh, and Santaram went back and we got the grant, first grant, I think about 20 or 30 lakhs, I don't know. 30 lakhs, 30 lakhs. For a magnetic resonance no. spectrometer no. in NMR. No, no, 30, um, 30 lakhs was granted, mm. out of which 20 lakhs, which is an Irish grant, dedicated yes. to the purchase of the first NMR, big NMR, 100 megahertz NMR. Pulse spectrometer. Pulse spectrometer, the first of its kind. To come they to India. In IIT Bombay, they no, no, it in no, no. Even they never they had, had it had in atomic energy, but IIT Madras had it. They had a, they had a big uh, some heavy equipment in IIT conference. It's now comparable to ours because ours is a pulse Fourier transform. Uh, 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 hundred megahertz but the yes. first of its kind. The landed the kind of work that I I did, what I remember is you have to get so much information. You had to go to director general of technical development, there is an office called Director General Technical. There you have to go, talk to the guys, get the necessary Justify the import. Justify the import and what not. And finally, prepare, local preparation. Yes. But I must tell you, there is one important concept that we have developed, which was a, an envy of everyone, as is already partly pointed it out. That is, we had two sets of technical staff. The one set of technical staff is nothing but an operating technical staff. He knew the science behind it. He knew how to operate the instrument. 
He's the one who will collaborate with the Oracle University, will, will discuss with the consumers or users, mm -hmm. including our students. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's a second set of technical assistants who are electronics personnel. And this is something that's special. The most important advantage of it, ours is the only center of that kind, which is importing a foreign equipment, but no service is expected from them. We never signed an annual maintenance contract with any company. It's so not any so. mm -hmm. We are beautiful people. We are such great people. Yes. Shantaruban, Devasarayam, Parnisami, and so on. So yes. Some of them attained initially at the Central Electronic Center. Then it was yes. Mr. Rakap, the German uh, person who was in charge. And he liked our style of operation. Yes. He and his mom liked our style of operation. He said, who do you want from the Central Electronics and I'll bring them. So I said, give me about three people. So initial setup, three people came. Yes. And one of them is uh, Parnasani, Kamalaman, etc. So in fact, they, these people are so good in electronic troubleshooting that we will send them to Agarwal Eye Clinic to repair their yeah. decoagulator for the uh, <coughs> We will send it to Shankar Neitralaya for repairing equipment because they didn't have any expertise and to get somebody from UK or USA to come and repair is too expensive. They just give a call to any address, we send our technician, we don't charge them because it's a charitable institution. But you know, this is stupid on our part. Now we should have, should have cost a lot of money by way of industrial consultancy and we didn't do that. It was all free. We did the service, came back. Probably with a cup of tea. The, the ICSR did not exist at that time. Later on, only the industrial consensus sponsored this expansion. Uh, the expansion okay. took place. That's what is very important. The expansion took place. Now, we got almost all the sophisticated equipment. I'm telling you, really sophisticated equipment. Not available to anybody in, uh, in most of the institutions. Even Indian National Sciences did not have what we wanted. Mm -hmm. we, we brought imported, you see, what's called X-band and Q-band frequent frequency uh, EPS, EPS spectrometers. Mm -hmm. And also we had a system which can go down to liquid nitrogen temperature later, also with the liquid air temperatures and so on. And then laser arm and spectrometer. And then of course Fourier IR, you name it. And, and then turned out one of my interests is crystallography. So we decided to go in also for crystallography. Yeah. Right across our road, in the Kindi Center for, the, for uh, Madras University, there was a crystallography center which was once headed by Professor G. N. Ramachandran. G. N. Ramachandran. So now they thought that we are competing with them. And not only that, and we did much better results than them. In one of the conferences, somebody said, if you want to get any crystal structure, you know, uh, structure made, you go to IIT Madras. They said, no, don't go to IIT University <laughs> Madras. To that extent, we have been servicing the people. The service is to the extent of 40 to 45 percent for local people, including us. And the remaining is for all people outside. And Subramanian has already mentioned it, that uh, you know, it's our first come, first serve business. Occasionally, yeah. it so happens. Before. Then the mandate, once you have been provided such a lot of money from the government, and even an IIT, and there are a large number of colleges and universities where there are teachers teaching subjects without the knowledge behind it, without any hands-on experience behind it, especially teachers who teach uh, postgraduate uh, <coughs> chemistry and physics. So we started every summer two or three summer schools. A summer school on X-ray crystallography. Currently there is one is running now. No, the first one is about, if you remember, first one is on quantum mechanics, quantum chemistry and spectroscopy. Yeah. It's a three week intensive course. Yes. Unbelievable. A lot of senior professors came. We wrote all the lecture notes and two kind of Bible like big books were made and we gave everyone a book and they are using, even today, some of them are using for teaching the postgraduate classes. Yeah. Yeah. So the summer schools are all subjects. Take a particular uh, subject of importance, run it for three or four days for postgraduate post students, college teachers, throughout the region as well as throughout the, uh, the country. People will come, give them accommodation, give them travel sometimes, yeah, that give them food and, money and give them lectures and many people benefited. Some of them are now retiring <laughs> from the process. The DST actually provided sufficient Some funds also. for education yes. purposes. Yes. So that also we did. Not just operating the instruments and of course, you know, we are also getting benefit. So one thing, even though we were having a center, we never lost sight of our own academic mm. performance. The most important thing is teaching on behalf of the chemistry department. 
Sometimes even the physicists used to come and sit in our courses like mass pass spectroscopy. And then of course what happened is that we designed new courses. In fact, we were the systematically we designed the syllabus. The academic courses. The academic courses, academic courses will yeah. new courses. Yeah. New courses. And then of course we proceeded further uh, in the sense then what to do? Then of course we began to conduct on specific subjects yes. like you know the advanced, level advanced, advanced yeah. level. All these things. So we are, and we never lost sight of none of us mm -hmm. lost never lost sight of the teaching. you know what's called teaching mm -hmm. and, and research and research. Yes. We were doing not only teaching, administering this place yes. and also you know what is called you're doing a lot of research. The RSIC professors published more than about 600 papers. Yeah, uh, together during the tenure yeah. here, several books were written by the faculty, and, and uh, several PhDs were produced. We produced the maximum number of PhDs. Uh, yes, although it's a small department, department, we we work for the chemistry department. Of course, the chemistry department uh, was quite happy when we joined. All the three of us joined. Then it turns out when Professor Ramachandran and the director called us that. You three people manage all the German equipment. The chemistry department started getting worried. Will we have access to this? When these three guys, new guys, have come, and suddenly all the instrument has been handed over to them, what happens to us in the chemistry? We got all the German equipment. At that time, Professor M. B. C. Sastri was the head of the department, who is also responsible for constructing the applied chemistry block, as it's called. That time, yes, and he got money from uh, government. He got a lot of equipment from Germany and. What day and night to construct that chemistry department and become one of the top chemistry departments in the country. And they were a little bit worried, so uh, they thought these three are kind of first class citizens and we are second class citizens. They yeah. think what is happening. Then we told them, rest assured, these equipments are as easily accessible to you as it is to outsiders because definitely it's more accessible to you. It is in the neighbor next room. So slowly and steadily that little uh, difficulty vanished. And also we gave uh, some what's called a uh, uh, separate app agent appointments for yes. some of the faculty, like Professor B. Vishwanathan. Yes. And then we even bought a special equipment like fluorescent spectrometer for to satisfy another faculty member, maybe yes. Ramakrishna. Whatever possible See, help, we could give the department. We could help them, them. Yeah. in addition to helping ourselves. Yes. So we did that. So there was now they realized, okay, we are we, we are here only to help them rather than you know so take away their prestige to us. It went on very well. So that way it was going on well and by and large it was working well until uh, we retired. So this thing passed away and Maroharan became Vice Chancellor but that's what no, he no, pulled out. But even before that there are many things to say. And then I for took example, a voluntary retirement after 28 years I took a voluntary retirement to go to the United States to work on imaging of cancer tissues. And so the institute had some not really correct policy. By way, by way of appointing temporary heads of departments for this center. So, for two years, it will be a mechanical engineer who will be there. So, before that, there's many more things that we have to say mm. about RSIC itself. RSIC was functioning very well without any problem. Not only that, we are responsible for the opening of the RSIC in four other places yes. Bombay, Shillong. I have personally went to Shillong and told them how to do Lucknow. that. Lucknow. And they come, they used to come, Lucknow and uh, also Chandigarh. This, but not, nobody could beat us yes. with respect to performance. They, even the DSP used to say, everything is happening here, you are only advising them, what can we do, how to make it better. But of course, we told them that we would do that. But within the institute, immediately there was a realization, of course Ramachandran went away, Professor Pandali took over for some time, and then Professor Narayan, but then afterwards Professor Indreshan came in yes. as the director. There was a new activity. When Indreshan came in, I think that's, a, that's your time, okay? There was a new kind of night. Indreshan realized there are a few guys in this place, you know, who can do things. So I went to him, first I asked him, I want a new building for myself. I said, you want a new building for yourself? Yes, because I have so many equipment, they are lying down here, there, etc. It's all scattered. I want to put them in one place. So he said, okay, here you are given the money, go build it. So first two floors came up. Behind then, CLT. And then behind CLT. That's what the, the regional sophisticated instrumentation sign was there until some time back. Then, you know, what happened, they also found out that we are good administrators, we can get along with people and so on and so forth. So one day he asked me, why don't you become a warden? Ah, that's not my territory, I told him. 
No, no, I'm going to suck you for something else. Okay? You are going to be the chief for it. No, that also I don't want. No, no, I said, you are going to do this because there's a lot of problem in that, in that place. That is the hospital sector. There was a big problem between the workers and uh, students. So, first, he wanted me to meet the student uh, committee. I went there. I was actually perplexed to see hundred people sitting down there, like in a senate hall. We have lesser senate members than they have in that committee. I said, how do you manage with this committee? You cannot. I want this to be reduced to 13 or 14. Immediately the students went, how can you do that? I will do it. If you do that, I will continue to work for you. Otherwise, I am just going away. I am a beautiful place to do research and teaching, I will do it. Then they thought, okay. Then of course they gave me the permission. I cut down the committee, committee number, and we acted upon it. The hostels became better, and of course the relationship was established. Then he forced me to become dean of students for a couple of years, and that was my, I mean, what I call as a, the most stressful time. These two, my friends, they went out of the country on a sabbatical, mm -hmm. right? At the same time. Yes. And I was here alone, man in the man in the RSIC as well as the Dean of Students position, it was a tough time. But we had also the most interesting thing was what was called open house concept. Professor Indeshan said, why don't you have open house for it? So everybody knows about IIT, they don't know what is inside. So you should bring them in. That so still happens now. I did, now every I did that for the first time. First open house was done by me. Mm -hmm. And then when they, the way I'm saying is, finally when they went through the gate, went through the RSIC, they were amazed. Wow, from that, you know, you have seen on those books, that's a stress book, which they did, everybody has written, they don't understand, a big, big equipment, so expensive, and people are operating with these. So, this is, this, this, this one aspect of it that should not be forgotten, that, uh, man. but there's one thing I must say about the character of the faculty of IIT Madras. <coughs> I'm a junior faculty compared to most of the senior professors here, but still, when I told them the open house is going to be conducted with my chairmanship, I invited all of them came. People like very senior people like uh, you know Bargis and uh, Professor E.G. Ramachandran, etc. They came, gave advice, and then of course they listened to my way of conducting things, etc. It was a great success. Oh, the cooperation among the faculty yeah, is unbelievable. Incredible. Yeah. That time I found out why IITs are like this. This is because when time demands. When occasion demands, they will always come together. You put a really yeah. unified face to the <coughs> Inside there may be little, little difficulties and differences, but it doesn't show up. And then similarly, for example, we conducted, for example, myself or Subramanian will conduct several conferences, international conferences in here. We brought some of the standards from various subjects. You know, people came from Russia, like Bazooka, yes. Liechtenstein, yes. and then from the US I have Solomon and many other people. And similarly he brought some people of uh, uh, Klaus, Klaus Mobius. Klaus Klaus Mobius he brought. So and like this uh, we used to bring a large John number Pilbro of people. John Pilbro from John Pilbro. Quite a number of top people in I this field. They were very happy to come to the campus and uh, they enjoyed the campus. Of course they did enjoy RSIC but they looked at the years <coughs> and the monkeys and, and the campus. They were very happy to. I think two or three P Germans came here and stayed for a month, yeah. gave a series of lectures. Of course, we put them in, you know, overnight trains to Kerala and other places for sightseeing and all that. It was, uh, it was nice. And then let us talk about the department and also yeah, talk okay. about uh, okay. extracurricular activities and things okay. like that. Extra regarding activities. the RSIC, though RSIC is a separate center, both budgetary as well as the management operation wise. We were also effectively involved with the department, effectively involved with the department. In fact, Professor Sastri, before he left, initially he fought with me because I wanted independence. He didn't like it. But later he found out that I can support him. So he said, you are in charge of seminars, you are in charge of that, you are in charge. So he initially loaded us. Similarly, for example, Subramani was asked to do certain jobs, etc. Whatever is given, we did it. So the three of us, that's why they call us you know, three musketeers, <laughs> and I would like to tell you in, the, in terms of recognitions, we were the uh, first was, three. Uh, Indresen was very close to us, uh, all the three of us. Yeah. And uh, he also made me sports advisor, 
because we are not been waving the inter IIT continuously for six or seven years. Then by luck, when I took over as sports advisor, <coughs> it was at that time IIT Bobby, and we came with the trophy. Came back and Indraisen was very happy. A big party was thrown in Indraisen's uh, director's uh, house's lawn. It was fabulous. And now the Indraisen always is very, very, very time, close to students. Students really liked him. Yeah. For the first time in my capacity as the dean of students, he told me, in fact, I can't say it's mine, he told me, Manavaran, how about calling teacher evaluation? I told him, I have no problem. But there may be some people who may find it a problem. What do I do? Then he said, you start it. So I started. I said, Dean of Students, that's my work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually partly, it should be due to the Dean of Academics. Yes, Dean but, of Academics. But he said, OK, you do this work. So I took it over continually, and then consulted some other things, like in the United States, how they do it. And then I prepared a questionnaire. I, I questionnaire the for the students. And so students were given a chance to you know, chance to address this question. They were very good. Unfortunately, I caught the wrath of some of the faculty. Mm -hmm. So he wants to boost himself. So he wants to create this, and all his questions are designed that way. No, if you want to give more questions, I'm ready to improve. But I improved it. And of course, the best teachers were selected on the basis of the input from the students. And of course, the best input came from the first year BTEC students. Yes and MSc students first year, but that was continued. Uh, so, uh, no, I have been uh, attending the uh, prize ceremony for first year <coughs> in the last two years, I have been attending here. They have given 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. I was best teacher three times, they gave you only a slip of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but in my case, what is it? The first two years... A computer output came, you got the top rank in best teaching, congratulations in the race. <laughs> But in my case, I went and course. told this director, you know, if you want call back the world best teachers and give them some <laughs> special <laughs> price. <laughs> so again, if you look at it, not only the open house, but also this the teaching, the teacher evaluations. First initially opposed, but then everybody found out there must be something to this because we get a kind of a ranking, etc. So then you'll be finally within about two years, or hundred percent of the faculty fell in line. Yeah, uh, self-evaluation is only for our own good, so that we can improve. Because it's not only self-evaluation, it's course evaluation also. They can also give. Another now, thing I love in this institute is teaching first be tech students. Because they are cream de la cream. But on an all India basis, you have really the top cream coming to IIT Madras. <coughs> so to teach them is not only a pleasure, it's a challenge. They will ask you the most difficult questions. And they are very attentive. And I remember I was teaching uh, first year uh, Engineering chemistry, quantum chemistry, molecular structure, and things like that. People get interested. Even they the will come, one or two of them will come and sit by embassy classes to see what I'm teaching. They'll come in the night because I am one of those uh, workaholics during my first 10, 20 years. So they'll go home for a cup of coffee at 5 o'clock. 8 o'clock, I have my dinner. 8 the day, I'm back in RSIC. And all my research scholars will have to come because the brother is here, so we might also work. That's so students are working up to 12 o'clock in the night, 1 o'clock, RSIC will always be lit up. RSIC will be always lit up. Always lit up with the his students, the my students, Suji students, 20 of them, at all times working late at night. The they day. also, sometimes daytime you will not see them, but 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock after the dinner, they will all be there discussing among themselves, doing some book club, you know, take a new book and then start reading each other, so like that. So the B-Tech students especially, I love them because they will come to my room in the night yeah. with this new question, sir, you, they say you are doing MRI migrating, because tell us all about it. Yeah, it's not yourself, no, no, I want to know about it. Some two other students will come, then I will go to the blackboard, explain things to them. That way, a bunch of undergraduate students became very close to me. They were the people who said, sir, can you conduct a quiz program for us for the next bonding round? I said, sure, I can do that, let me see. Some two or three students who are extremely quiz nuts will keep all sorts of bizarre facts. They will keep, uh, also they will go to various quiz programs in various uh, festivals and then keep track of the questions they got and then they had created some booklets of quizzes and all that. I said, these things are old quizzes, I will do it myself. I have an Encyclopedia Britannica at home. When there is nothing else to do, I go through Encyclopedia Britannica. Take really some curious, bizarre, out of this fact, so that the question when it is put, everybody will struggle hard to answer that kind of a thing. 
So I started doing it. The first one was done in 1972, January. After one year, I was here. We started it in CLT. I also had some music questions, some movie questions. I even had players from Madras players come and act a play in the stage and ask questions of that. I did that. CLT can get only 300 people inside if you bank them. All the thousand people wanted to go inside CLT. They broke the door and really damaged the CLT. So that year, the quiz program was good, but a lot of damage to CLT. So the director said, take it away. Don't do it anymore in CLT. And then the television lab said, we will provide you big monitors, 12 of them or six of them around the way, so we can ask questions on videos and use the stage and then we will project everything onto the big screen and have quiz program. Next year, the quiz program was attended by 3,000 people. All the city students were there. Then I also started making it longer, starting at 7, go up to 11. Next year, it started at 7, went up to 12. By the time we reached the sixth year, it was something like midnight affair. After 1.30, it will go. A lot of interesting questions. Who will be sitting in the first row? Indresen during his time, Narajan during his time, all the, even uh, uh, Narana Murthy will be sitting in the front row asking those. Many of them will answer the questions which is not answered by the students ultimately. And so we had all the directors very much interested in the quiz program and it was fun. It was a lot of fun during those days. So I, I enjoyed doing that up to about 1979 or eight, uh, 1989. Even during your period, I might have done the Madhika quiz. And then they wanted to bring Siddharth Roy from Calcutta to do the quiz program. Because they wanted to make it even more. So Siddharth Roy said, yeah, I can come and do it, but I need first class airfare from Calcutta to Madras for me and my wife. And I stay in Five Star Hotel. And all they looked at the calculations. It was too expensive. I think they actually ditched him. <laughs> and then came to me, I said, sorry, you guys went to Siddhartha, get Siddhartha. You know, I have done for 18 years, I would have become stale also, get a new face and it will be good for you. Yeah. So they started managing themselves afterwards, yeah, and it went on very well. Nandraja was a quiz master, Professor N.V.C. Swami was a quiz master before me. They, because quiz is always an interesting subject for everybody. There's a science, general knowledge, everything comes into it. So. I am the quiz program for the best teacher award. At the end of the award, I will have a 12 question quiz. Last year and year before last. But the, the most important thing at this point is to say how others uh, decide about our, our own excellence, mm -hmm. others from outside. Yeah. That's a very important quiet. point. That's a very important point because of the fact that we are doing, though we are doing teaching and we are doing research, how much of us are being recognized outside? It can easily be seen by means of two or three facts. One is, of course, fellowship. I am the first fellowship of the Indian Academy of Sciences, and then I'm the first FNA to become, become a fellow of the National, Indian National Science Academy, followed by my two friends who also got the F, FNA as well as uh, FAC as well as FNA. This is the only section of a, you know, what is called of an institute where everybody is a fellow of the academy. So what happens? There is something in this group. So we are academically strong, not only teaching in administration, but also in what is called a knowledge creation. It is true that we have not created anything like for consultancy, which I did very late. Even after retirement, I did some consultancy work. <coughs> All these no, our, uh, our research and recommendation was so sophisticated, the run of the mill industry did not really find something which is immediately useful for us. They used to come to us. So they have become, that's one thing. Secondly, large number of foreign visitors came here. Some of us, some of the people were mentioned here. But after certain cases, for example, getting certain uh, professors from USA, USSR, was very difficult. But we got them. Lichtenstein is a good example. Yeah, Lichtenstein, like Bershaw, Bershaw, yeah. Yeah, Bersukar, Bersukar came, they all came from These are really stalwarts in their field. And sometimes yeah. it's very difficult to get visa for them from the Indian Embassy in Russia. Then we write letters, get letters written by DST from the government of India and all that and get them visa. Yeah. It was nice. It's kind it's of kind difficult of days then. Travel was not very easy, especially from Russia to India and China to India and all that. Also, our recognition also goes beyond the border of the country. For example, we have been visiting professor. For example, I have been a, I have been a visiting professor to uh, Netherlands University for one and a half years, and similarly I went to Australia, 
and then of course the National Institute of Health. That has become my mainstay for a long time. But he went there permanently. Yeah, I went, I went for a sabbatical <coughs> for one year to the Institute of Health, which is one institute in the world which has, takes care of finding drugs and cure for all parts of the world, various diseases. There is a National Heart and right. Lung Institute, National Cancer Institute, National Institute for Arthritis, National Institute for Digestive Diseases, like that. 36 institutions are in one campus, very close to Washington, D.C. In these institutions, now at the moment, last year, there are seven Nobel laureates on duty within one campus. And the quality of what they do is just simply impeccable because the facilities and the money that is provided by the U.S. government is just enormous. You ask for something, you get it. You don't have to write a project and compete. You have a very important thing working on it, you get the money allocated right away without sweating. So I had gone in 1994 for a sabbatical from here. Then I told them that, you know, this MRI people are doing is for diagnostic radiology, looking inside the heart and things like that. We can also use the electron to do our imaging, but then it is very difficult to capture an electron together, very fast dynamics, relaxation times are microseconds, nanoseconds. So we have to develop very good expertise in equipmentation before we can capture electron image in the body. And we also need injectable free radicals inside the body. And while we were discussing that, a company in Sweden came up with a non-toxic free radical, which can be injected into animals, and still we can see the flow of it in the blood vessels and tissue. With that, collaboration with them, I started working on an animal model equipment. And for the electronics part of it, lo and behold, who helps me? One of the engineers from RSIG. Yeah, I know. He's the I best know that engineer. I got the best engineer, even better than anybody I can grab in the United States. So I called him, take a sabbatical, come here, and then work with me. So he came. We developed a prototype equipment for imaging free electrons in animal bodies. The beauty of it is free electrons give image contrast dependent upon oxygen concentration of the body. So you can map out indirectly, quantitatively, oxygen. And this is very important for cancer cure, radiation cancer cure, uh, 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 drug uses, and uh, various, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, chemotherapeutic agents. All work in presence of oxygen, don't work when there's no oxygen. Hypoxic zones are not very resistant to radiation. So people wanted to look at quantitatively the oxygen in cancers, they had no way. And this, became such an important role. I have about 12 patents on oxygen imaging, working with work. I just went on a sabbatical in 94, proved that it is possible to do imaging of the tissue and came back. Came back in 94. 95 onwards, every other week, late night at 1 o'clock, this is only in the evening there, there will be a call from the director of NIH, director of the Cancer Institute, saying that when are you coming back for a longer time? I said, you know, I have a lot of students to finish, you know, give me another year. Then every three months there will be a call, a letter saying that we want you to enlarge that particular machine so that it can finally become clinically useful for humans. So finally the pressure was so much, I went and talked to Narajan, R. Narajan, saying, sir, I will take a voluntary retirement. Where do you want to go? I said, sir, it's a health thing because I am doing work here, spectroscopy, I am very happy with my work, but if something relates to human health and curing human health, I think it will be more humane to do that job, so let me go. I said, okay. So I called them, uh, some of them, okay, after I finish all my students, next year I will come. They processed for me and for my wife and children green card. And the embassy from Germany Circle calls me, sir, your visas are ready whenever you're picking it up. <laughs> this is fantastic. Kind of, you know, inviting you on a plant. So I went to embassy, picked up the visa, and then said goodbye to uh, IIT Madras. There was a meeting at CLT. Of course, RSIC people were so attached to me. They, for, for the two or three weeks before I left, nobody was happy. This guy is going to go away. What are we going to do and things like that? But I like so. him. I, I basically retired from here. But even before the retirement, we have been, I have been also associated, I have been associated with also the National Institute, but that's not Aging. in the main campus, yeah. but in the aging campus. Mainly to study hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. And without me, that, the boss cannot work. Yes. You know, Rifki always yeah, wants Joe. me to come there to solve their problems, etc. I used to call it. We published a very, very interesting papers in journals of high impact factor, like the Journal of yeah. American Chemical Society, at least four of them, and then of course Journal of Molecular Physics and so on and so forth. So it's only publications, etc. knowledge creation. That's it. They have not applied. Uh, it's true. It's not applied. 
But the oh, most, the most important thing, interesting, interesting thing is having been in an IIT. That is really that really makes us different from the rest of the world. Up there. You are an IITian, whether a professor or a student, it's something unique. Yeah. So we also wanted to contribute to the uh, society and social things inside here. So I was a warden, and many times the hostel employees will come to me saying that, "Sir, I got a temporary job, and I have to go. And what, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's after six months, my job is over. It cannot be renewed." Like that, several people. So I went and talked to the then director was Arna Rajan at that time. Sir, some of these people who worked for temporarily for 16 years, temporarily for 12 years, and that's not fair. We have to kind of make them regular. Where is the money for it? You know, when they become permanent, we have to give them medical money, we have to give them pension, we have to give them. There is no money in the kitty. I said, sir, there are thousand people, including class three, class four employees in the institute, but temporary. They are so-called non-master role and above or something. Frankly speaking, things were even worse. In 1984 or 85, when he really joined this institute. Uh, but at the time, and that's only the, the trouble started between the students and the, and the workers. Yes. So the workers were to be, I formalized the first, first mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I formally made them workers. And there's a small document which we wrote. It's a kind of a document that they can use. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. that, that. Only with that thing, most of them have become permanent. And part of the, some of them will get the children admitted into Vanavani school. Yes. This very year it was not possible. So all those facilities were given and the salaries were, salary, there was a salary, what is it called, pay, mm -hmm. uh, scale. pay scale was given. That was the first time. So they still remember whenever I go, I'm the first one to do that. And it so happened, the second also, he has to do that. It's all the people came to people me and then we, the we got out the Mali's, you know, we have a, Division. Yeah. None of them have a permanent job. They are coming working, they don't even, many of them don't have birth certificate. You call them, you draw, what is your age, what is it? Ah, I don't know, sir. I don't know my date. That was a big problem. So, Shanmukham, the former registrar of IIT, myself, Professor Narayanan of Applied Mechanics Department, S. Narayanan, and one other person I remember, we all sat and told Narayanan, sir, let us take a few of them and give them some permanency, otherwise, you know, they are really going crazy. They don't know what to do after the job terminates. Many of them have the children studying here. They have a house in Melacheri. They, have, they are not eligible for any quarters inside because they have temporary applies and all that. So Narayan ultimately, okay, is this job which you are not going to be happy to do, it's a Marathan job. Sir, we will sit every Saturday from morning 8 to evening 4 in the administration building and take groups of 24, 30 every day, interview them, see whether they are qualified enough and they are doing the job enough. And we'll ascertain. we had actually the medical officer Ganesan to come look at the teeth to estimate their age. <laughs> like people do in a uh, market of cows and bulls and you buy bulls, they open the mouth, look at the teeth and say, ah, this is likely to be 12 year old or 13 year old. So Ganeshan looked at the mouth of all the bodies and no, class three, class four employees. Of doing that. And they estimated the age approximately because we had to write something in the appointment, this data for rough data. Almost most of them were born on one one something. <laughs> they were very faster. And then we regularized them and overnight their salaries got tripled. Because they were getting a very, very puny job, always borrowing, borrowing most of the time from me if I have the warrant and it will never come back. <laughs> So anyway, we, we did that and then Narayan was happy, Risto was happy that we had done it. Later on the audit highly objected it. How come you suddenly make an expenditure so much all of a sudden and you, you have to be censured by the audit and things like that. They started really making trouble for Narayan. And then Narayan called me and said, they are censuring me, I am censuring you. <laughs> so we need to do this in a big scale. I said, once we are interviewing, we are treated equally for everybody. So it turned out that we had to recognize 300 people. Well, Finally, it went through and everything was done, no problem there. So after that, when I, after I went away to USA in 98, after the volunteer term, and whenever I enter, because during that regularization, some 20 security people also were regularized. So when I go there, invariably a couple of guys will be standing in the gate, putting this you know. So, because of you, you are still here, like that they will say. So I had, uh, I had enjoyed helping people inside the campus. The campus is, as good as we keep the rest of the people happy. So that, you know, security people should be happy, class three, class four people should be happy. So my I part in trying to help them made me feel good. So yeah, but at the same time, you know, there is a, there's always a process, you know, we are still continuing to be associated with the department. 
For example, take me. I, I retired basically in 1995. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, I continued because I have a Department of Science and Technology, Ramana Fellowship, mm -hmm. was there, and subsequently in the INSA Senior Scientist and so on and so forth. But in between, in between these two things, I became a Vice Chancellor for the University of Madras. That is mainly because of our, what is it called, credentials that were established at the IIT Madras. There is no doubt about it, because one of the so-called members of the research committee said, nobody but him shall adopt the position of the things and you make it, make the university again become similar to what it was under the headship of Air Moria. But of course, I did my best to completely modernize the system, introduce new academic systems, make new administrative uh, setups and so on and so forth. But some of them could not like it. And for political reasons, I left. But doesn't matter, I don't regret it. I came back to the institute. And of course, Nadalin was there. Nadalin immediately said he made me the first institute professor for some time. Mm -hmm. So I became an emeritus, emeritus professor here. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, of course, I've been having different other positions. Now I have a distinguished fellowship, which was given by the IIT Madras, so using which I was able to bring some research funds and continue to do the research. And I must tell you, both of us, and including Sujit Singh, we obtained a large number of individual research grants in addition to what we get for the what we so get. Most of the research. students worked in RSAC were supported by us. Supported by us. We didn't Basically. get any money from the institute. There was always project and funding for the yeah. project associates. Some of them spent more time than they should, but then of course right. we have to go to their support. So basic support, we were always taking good care of our students. That's one thing. There was only one laboratory in the entire, I would say, very honestly I say that, work for a minimum of 18 hours per day yes, to 24 hours. Yes. Because our students are also having the same habit of working late, probably coming late with no many questions. That's because the campus was just nearby. We were living inside the campus. And Madras City is not a great place to go out to. So go home and then go back <laughs> to the campus and nothing like that was good. Another thing that uh, you gave me as a thing is, what is your look on the campus then and now? The campus in 1971 when I entered was lush green. It was November, so it had just rained and all the sprouting of the trees had happened. Lush green, lots of monkeys. So many monkeys that even they will come inside our home and open the refrigerator and pick up. Ah, yeah. Lots of monkeys in CO19. That's when we began to get a key to the refrigerator. Yes. So monkeys, deers, uh, the black bucks. Uh, uh, yeah, I had a baby. And sometimes I was in Warren's cottage number eight for three years, the first three years. I think an anecdote comes by, I have to tell you this. Uh, I was given a telegram by the Western Union saying that you are selected assistant professor. You can join within the next six months. We will provide you with some assistance with respect to travel and campus accommodation will be provided. So I come here, give my certificate, say it's not one A Subramaniam who was uh, as yeah. to in that uh, administration building. He wrote on everything. Okay, very good. It turns out that his grandfather and my grandfather are from the same place. Mm -hmm. I think the world is very small, I told him. And I said, I'll join. And I said, for courtesy, I will go and see the director and register and go to Kelsey Department. So I went and saw the director. He was there, as usual, with his jacket and suit and tie, always. Impeccably dressed. So you were supermodel. Yeah, I remember. Yes, yes, very good. I'm glad you came back. Is everything okay? Sir, only one thing is the telegram which said I will get campus accommodation. So what should I do? No problem. Go and see the estate and works department. Tell them that you have been promised uh, an accommodation by the director. Show your letter to them. They will make arrangements. I'm sure you'll get an accommodation very soon. So I said, thank you very much, sir. And then went and saw the registrar. The registrar had this vibhuti here, shaking <laughs> his hand. Said, <laughs> so what's your so, Oh, you are the new guy who came from US? Yeah, I'm the new guy who came from US. So what can I do for you? Uh, sir, uh, this is the telegram, this is the letter. They said, they will give me an accommodation. You know how many people are without accommodation in the campus? I said, I don't know that. You are a young man joining the chemistry department. Now you are, you know the junior both faculty of the chemistry department. And you expect accommodation in the campus. Don't you think it's a joke? I said, it is not a joke. I am asking, if it is not there, I can't do anything about it. But there is a letter. I talked to the director. He says, go and see the registrar. So I have seen him. 
sorry, no such thing as accommodation for another five years, you'll get no accommodation on the campus. Go and get an accommodation, Taramani or Adaya or somewhere, there are plenty of houses available in Adaya. Sir, that I can inquire. But accommodation on the campus, if it is available, please let me know. Okay, okay. Then I went down, he was, I think, uh, registrar was on the third floor, director was on the fifth floor. So I went up to the fifth floor, sir, I met the registrar. And he says, I want getting accommodation for five years because I am the junior most faculty in the chemistry department. He said, what he said? Okay, sit down. Call the register. So, Seth Rather comes. Sir, you know as a director of the institute, I have promised a person, I have invited him to join us from USA. He already had a job in USA. He did not take it up. He honored my request and he has come. And I have given him promise that I will give a job uh, accommodation. And you see there's no accommodation for five years? Okay, let me ask you a simple question. What is happening to Vardas Quartesh number eight? He has walked oh, around and found out what accommodations are being locked up and not used. Sir, that is kept for uh, broken furniture. Tomorrow, take all the broken furnitures, throw it in the workshop or carpentry section, I don't care. That has to be repaired, cleaned, whitewashed, and given to Dr. Subramaniam within the next five or six days. This is an order of the director. That's me. I, I, I have ghost paper. Here is a director <laughs> which says, I have promised this young man, you give it. If you are a registrar, you are supposed to make things possible. It's always easy to say it's not possible. There's a direct, auditors will say audit objection. Registrar will say statutory objection. I don't want you people to object. You have to enable the director to get things done. So I have promised this young man accommodation. He gets it by hook or crook. He will get it because you know, you just never said, there is a house being kept for broken furniture. We don't build houses of broken furniture in the campus because accommodation is so tough in uh, Madras. So you should give it to him. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. He the came down. I, I, first he said yes sir and I came down, he was waiting for me outside. <laughs> so you went and complained to the sir. I didn't complain. I told him that I will not get anything for five years. So I was just informing him. That's not information, that's a complaint against register. <laughs> you, no, think, I had my own, you, you think I you're had, going to be comfortable in this institute? I, I, had, I, had, no I had my own bad time. Okay, all right. You. Okay, you'll get your accommodation. Okay, don't worry. All right. No, he wanted to prove. He, he, <laughs> he has a little because problem. Because he said he cannot yeah. take that uh, complaint in front that, of me. He has a kind of the director told him so. The only but Setanathan was always like that. Setanathan is Setanathan. Yeah. That's what. You tell anyone, you ask anyone, they will tell you the story about you. So this is an interesting anecdote, I remember. He's a nice person. He's a very nice person, a very good reason. Otherwise, he will do the but job. But he has got his own personality you have to deal with. <laughs> but anyway, but that's all part of the things. Even I had a little quarrel with him. Once by him, unwittingly, I signed it with a green ink. Because that was what was lying there, so I signed it and sent the letter. He called me and said, Sir, I began to, they later began to respect me. So, Sir, you have signed in Green ink. That's my privilege. What your privilege? Where is it? Give me the, your statutory reference that only you can sign it. Then he came down and said, no, that, that is the practice. Whenever there is a green ink, it is from where is it? Oh, you can say that. <laughs> if you have told me, please refrain from here after you. You sign it in blacking or whatever ink, but don't sign it in green ink. I would have agreed to you. But you say you are demanding that don't do that. You kept quiet. I'm sorry, please, sir. Don't sign it. And then he told me, don't sign it. Well, so I think we are going to conclude uh, in the next five, okay. six minutes. Before I conclude, you know, I had one of my most wonderful time of 30 years as an assistant professor, professor, head of the RSI, and things in the campus. And I was internally a little bit sad when I told Narayan that I am taking voluntary time and going away. I was sad. I went away, but all the time kept in touch with my students and the faculty here. And every year or two when I drop in in India, it would be for IIT campus. I definitely see my professors, colleagues and things like that. It was going on. And then when I finally decided to quit my job in the USA, God has given me a great place in this campus. Because I came, knocked mm -hmm. the door of Bhaskar Ram Forthi. He jumped up from his door. Are you not Subramanian? Yes. You taught me chemistry. I was the 77 batch or something like that. Oh, you remember that? Of course. I remember you are our best teacher. So you are going to be you are going to be in the campus again? I said, how? Oh, I talk to chemistry, become an adjunct professor in chemistry. You go and talk to the head of the department of chemistry. And RSIC, I'm sure they can find a room for you in RSIC. 
So I went to RSSC, they got the room ready. The chemistry department told me, gave me an uh, adjunct professorship. And it's kind of the whole story turned back again and I'm back in the campus seeing my colleagues, seeing the deer, you know, the monkeys. It's just incredible. It's really like a dream. Dream. It's really like a dream. I'm so happy that I came back and I'm still associated with IIT Patna. That is just an incredible uh, but grace. But Chance, uh, the blessing name RSSC did yeah. not sustain after 95 because for some reason, for uh, some reasons of financial allocation, etc., etc., it was converted into a sophisticated analytical instrument facility, which is in nomenclature wise, it is a little bit lower than regional sophisticated instrumentation center. However, the one thing that I would say is the, the worst thing that has happened to RSIC, then now it's called SAIF, is there is no permanent kind uh, of faculty. No, 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 there is no permanent faculty associated with that. Yeah. Because we are totally four faculty subsequently on Dr. TK Case University. Four of us and we could divide the work and we will do in the academics as well as administration. Yes. But here it's only they are doing, coming to the center, they are only doing the administration. Yes. Whatever is signing papers, etc., etc., they do. But any administration of a center without an academic involvement will be a failure. So now you don't use RSIC, was projected so much as a national entity, and that's completely lost. That's what For I'm example, if an equipment is not working, my missing. work will suffer. Okay. So I will have a vested interest yeah. in getting things going. Yeah. So if four of the faculties have such vested interest and keep everything working, yeah. then the institute, that particular center will really flourish. And that was the story in the Esther years. Now there is a little bit of slack, but it's, it's functioning OK, because it's IAT is functioning. Had this been in a university setup, everything would have been close to the plastic, uh, you know, <laughs> cover and would have become bad. Fortunately, anyway, still uh, living along, still we are getting money. Last year we got money, three crores for a new equipment and uh, things like that. Slowly, RSA, DST also has woken up. Initially, somewhere in between, there was some kind of a story that why should you put this money in various institutions and then go, the go, let the institution get their uh, machines, let them, these centers have, can be closed down. Somebody came up with such a suggestion. Yeah. And we were worried that someday it's going to be closed down. Then uh, the new DST secretary, Ashutosh Mukherjee, uh, took over two years ago and I was there in DST presenting our uh, progress. He said, I think this is a wonderful concept. There is no question of closing down all this. We will in fact boost these centers so that they are extremely helpful for the young people who are doing research in rural areas. They are not exposed to anything. They will be able to come and do some work. So therefore, we shall make sure that these centers will still continue to be funded. That's what the new DST secretary said. It was really a nice positive statement from the Department of Science and Technology. So I think it will, it will carry on. Only thing is there are some dedicated faculty yeah, attached to this center. Then I think it will even even flourish better and more productive and more effective. But you know, what can we say? Well, we should thank you. Yeah, I think thanks for this opportunity from Heritage. Sometimes you might have found there's more personal projection in this talk. But when it sometimes becomes inevitable, because when you talk, you usually talk about yourself. You know, people are so happy to blow their own trumpets. So sometimes case, not but basically the idea is to reminisce our time here and to really come to a conclusion that this is one of the best places. Definitely the best place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thank you.